all blessed. We come to Jesus. Amen. How about uh, I believe there's a good number for the first coming of uh, 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 I mean, <laughs> uh, for for those who come for first time, I believe there's a good number right here. Please, uh, how about uh, just please standing up? Let us to know who you are and give you a welcome. Amen. Yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome. Welcome. Amen. Amen. Tonight we all come to Jesus. Amen. 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 How about I sing this song again? Okay. How about I sing this song again? Amen. Uh, how about like this? For the uh, one and three singular, how about brothers? Let's sing one and three. And sisters, let's sing two and four. Alternate. Okay. Let's sing this again. How about like uh, when brothers sing, how about that's all standing up? Yes. All right. Let's all stand up. Brothers. brothers standing up. Let's standing up. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's brothers standing up. Brothers standing up. <laughs> Not Sorry. sisters. Yeah. Sisters will stand up number two. Okay. Out of my bounded sorrow and night, Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. Into thy freedom, gladness, and light. Jesus, I come to thee. Out of my sickness, into thy help. Out of my one and into thy wealth, out of my sin and into thyself, Jesus, I come to thee. Sisters. Out of my shameful failure and loss, Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come. Into the great gain of thy cross, oh Jesus, I come to thee. Out of the world's sorrow, into thy bond, out of the world's sorrow, into thy tongue. Oh, out of distress. Jesus, I come to thee. Out of unrest and arrogant pride, Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come, into thy blessed will to abide. Jesus, I come to thee. To myself to dwell in thy love. All the days may we to church above. Our and our end on me like a dove. Jesus, I come to thee. Out of the fears and dread of the tomb, Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come. I come. Out of the depths of roaming untold, into the flood, my Lord, the same foe, ever thy glorious face me on toad. Jesus, I come to thee. Let's do number four again. Amen. Everybody stand up. How about number four? <laughs> Dress of the tomb. Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come into the joy and pleasure thy woe. Jesus, I come to thee. Out of the depths of ruin untold, into the flood thy love does enfold. Ever thy glorious face behold, Jesus, I come to thee. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. That's Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus, I come to thee. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Right. Amen. Come to Jesus. Amen. 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 Right. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, please be seated. Wow. <laughs> I feel like everyone is really burned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Compared to the first round. Wow, we really see that we are really, some kind of like we're designed for this coming of Jesus. Amen. Everyone is so strong, saying so strong, so strength, strengthful. <laughs> Amen. So Amen. okay, we'll sing this song maybe um maybe sometimes later. Uh, but also, uh, this is a gospel meeting. We'll also prepare some uh, testimonies, which means some brothers and sisters would like to share their story about their coming to Jesus, forgot, their, uh, forgot what they behind, and believe to Jesus about their own story. Uh, first of all, there's, uh, where is Sister Kiki? Okay, please. So at the time, my, my family moved from Vancouver to Shanghai because my mom's company moved and I went to an international school near my home. And immediately I felt a drastic cultural and environmental differences between the two countries. Um, because my way of thinking and behaviors were different from my peers in Shanghai, I faced a lot of attacks. Um, for example, um, kids in Vancouver were taught by parents and teachers to say thank you and police and we just use the please and we just use them all the time. But kids in Shanghai will find it a little bit silly and unnecessary. So when I say thank you to them out of habit, they would look at me, they would ask me to look at them and mockingly mimic the thank you back to me. Another example is um, when a student came up to me and said that he wanted to slap the glasses off my face. There was malice in many other scenarios such as um, slamming my book on the floor pushing me or um, after seeing me immediately walking away while shaking their hat. I was hurt and confused. I couldn't understand why in such a good school there were such bad students. So I wanted to rescue myself from the situation. Um, in that situation, I kept on analyzing um, their motive and finding questions within myself and thinking how I could react to the situation. And I just used my knowledge and logic to help myself, but I found that it just further trapped me into complicated thinkings. And in that case, I I would I insist to solve problems in my own way because I was convinced that the Lord mm, He wouldn't want to get He wouldn't want to engage in trivial situations like that, um, let alone specifically instructing me how to handle them. So I just couldn't turn and come to the Lord. And later in my teenage year, I came to the U.S. and the YP meetings in Church of Anaheim, and I felt the same intimate closeness as I, as I had back in church in Vancouver when I was a kid. And there was a song, like YP meeting song, and there's a verse, Philippians three thirteen, and that verse just enlightened me. Is forget the things behind, shut for the things before, and. That verse just enlightened me and I started to forget whatever was in the past and just started moving forward by getting to know the Lord um, and live and behave according to his word. As I gained a deeper understanding of the Lord, I his words care for me and I realized that there's wisdom in his word and wisdom has so much power that's not irrelevant to our life, but the power can penetrate into very practical aspects of our life and 
help me guide me in navigating even in complex situations. Um, yeah, and then also along with wisdom, there's also confidence, peace, and assurance to just go on, no matter how the outside situation is. And I just realized that um, I need to see things according to God's eyes, not eyes of logic or reasonings. Yeah, and also I became victorious and stopped caring because I know the Lord's grace is sufficient for me. Okay. And I just want to conclude my testimony by this verse, Hosea 6.3. Let us pursue knowing Jehovah. His going forth is as sure as the dawn, and he will come to us as the rain, as the lay rain which will water the earth. Now, whenever I experience anything, I just come to the Lord immediately, and I just tell him everything. I just give all the burden to him, and then I just forget and believe in his arrangements. Amen. Praise Lord. Yeah. Welcome, everybody, again. Uh, come to our gospel meetings in this uh, rainy and stormy night. Yeah, the weather could change anytime. However, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ never change because um, what, uh, it matters to him concerning us. And he wants to protect us. He wants to be our everything and the timely supply. Tonight, um, the subject of our gospel meeting is simply this wonderful mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, Amen. our Savior. But in order to receive him, in order to have established a relation to him, we have these three words in our program. The three words, forget, come, and believe suggest a pathway for us to come to know and experience this wonderful Savior Amen. in a personal and very subjective way. So um, I'm the first of uh, the three brothers who will uh, speak a, a, a little message. Uh, my focus will be on the first word, forget. Um, Ever since we were a, a child, we were taught, we were told, don't forget, don't forget. <laughs> Our parents told us, don't forget anything I tell you. <laughs> when we, when we uh, go to the uh, school, the teacher said, don't forget anything I teach you. So ever since we were young, if uh, we, we have this mind, I have to remember everything. If I forget something, we feel guilty. Yeah, that's my mistake. Oh, I forgot. However, the Bible does tell us we need to forget something. Yeah. We need to forget something. Especially the things that frustrate us, uh, uh, hinder us from moving forward. I believe everyone has this kind of experiences in our lifetime. You know, one time, um, I have a very two, uh, two good, good friends. So we got together, we talked almost everything. However, the other two one time had a fierce argument. Ever since then, they didn't talk to each other. So after several months, I, I want to reconcile their, their relationship. So I went to one of them. Hey, how about we invite so and so? Let's have a a coffee time. He said, "Oh, every time when I, when I think of what he told me, the word he used, I'm still so mad about him." Wow, he really have a good memory. <laughs> good memory of the word that the other one said. So he cannot forget that that word. So it's so hard for them to to reconnect that. So we have many the, the situations because we, we cannot forget something that they hinder us from recovering a relationship or frustrate us 
from moving forward or gaining something more advanced. Um, tonight, I want to sh share with you just one or uh, two verses. It's the um, on the last page of the program, Philippians 3, 13, and 14. How about let's read together? Amen. Brothers, I do not know of myself. Amen. I do not account of myself to have a lay hold. But one thing I do, one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind and stretching forward to the things which are before. Amen. In order to apply this, this, uh, the verses to, to ourselves, we need to know a little bit about the person who wrote this. Uh, the book of Philippians is one of the epistles uh, that was written by Apostle Paul in the, in the New Testament. Apostle Paul was an outstanding person. Before he came to know Jesus Christ, he was a famous scholar. He was a famous lawyer because he knew the laws in the Old Testament so well. Nobody could compete with him. And he not only know the law, know the details of the ordinances, but he practiced them strictly. And he even persecuted those who didn't practice those old, old law, the ordinances. And he was highly regarded by many people at that time because of his knowledge, his practice. So he's a, like a high level person, probably a very famous person. Because in another place in, in, the, in the Bible, he said about himself, I'm the Hebrew of the Hebrews. That means I'm the very best of the best. So nobody can com compete, can, can be compared with him. He's such a person. So he must be proud of his status, his knowledge, his practice, everything of himself. But one day, he called by Lord Jesus. His eyes were open. He saw this wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And this Christ not only died for him to forgive him, but also this, this, this Christ is like an infinite gold mine with unsearchable riches that meet his every need. Whatever he needs, this person, this, this living God can give him. And he, he realized that he has to forget what's behind him. For him, that's the knowledge of the old law, the practice in the past, and also the high status, mm -hmm. the social status, the recognition, mm -hmm. uh, his fame. He had, to, he had to forget all those things in order to gain Christ and enjoy Christ to the fullest extent. Mm -hmm. Because not forgetting those things that were behind would frustrate him from experiencing Christ even further. So he said, only one thing, forget the thing behind, but stretching forward. You know, he's always advancing, stretching forward to know Christ more. Today, I want to know Christ more than yesterday. He's this person in order for what? To, to, uh, toward the goal of the prize. Because knowing Christ, experiencing Christ to the full extent to him is the utmost, is, is the uttermost prize to him. Amen. The most valuable things in the, in the whole life. So this is the person. And this is the teaching. And this is the word in the Bible. From, from our God, we need to forget certain things 
in order to move forward. And uh, tonight, uh, you may ask, okay, how can I do this? How can I forget? How can I come to know him? Don't worry, just stay with us. We have more testimony and we have two more brothers. We will share with you how to know this Christ that will enable us to forget the things behind and stretch forward the things before us. To gain and enjoy this wonderful Christ to the fullest extent, just as the Apostle Paul did. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So it's really touching. No matter how good we are, how bad we are, we don't need to remember anything. Right? We just forgot something. And just to gain Christ. Okay. And then we have another testimony by Sister Michelle. Okay. Hi, my name is Michelle. I meet in church in Arcadia. So tonight I'm going to share a little bit about my personal experience with the Lord. Um, I started in financial industry in 2009 and uh, I feel it's not a hard job for me because of the years of experience. Until last year, things has been changed. Um, the Federal Reserve has been aggressively in increasing the interest rates. The stock market was going down. The bond market was going down too. Regardless of what assets the clients are investing, everything is losing their value. So my clients are calling me left and right. Even during my four months maternity leave, my clients are calling me. They're panic about the market and they're upset about their accounts. After I finished my maternity leave and went back to work, I felt really stressed and I had a lot of anxieties. I woke up at the 4 a.m. every morning because I was so worried about the client's complaints. For the first time, I felt that I need a career change. You know, the stress and the anxiety made me to turn, to turn back to the Lord. So I was thinking, oh Lord, do I really spend enough time with you? Do I have enough prayer with you? Do I really depend on you for my job or do I just depend on myself because I think I know what I'm doing so it made me have a repentance with the Lord so I came to the Lord and I told the Lord oh Lord humble myself let me just forget what I know and what I have learned let me come to you so every morning I pray to the Lord that Lord I really need you I am nothing and I can do nothing without you. With many prayers, my stress level came down and I feel no longer anxious. Even though my work is still the same and it's very busy, very intense, and the market is, is still going up and down every day, but I have this peace in me and I'm fully trust the Lord for every situation that he puts me into. So I'm going to close my today's testimony with Philippians 4.13, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Lord. Oh, we have such a gathering. Oh, it's just so nice to be among the God-loving people. So <clears throat> I come to the word, uh, come. Praise the Lord for come. Uh, let's read the verse together. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty-eight. Come to me who to toil and a burden, and I will give you rest. Okay. So here, there's a calling. Come to me. Come to me. The Lord is calling. Come to me. He said, all who toil and are burdened. So in a sense, a lot of us, I, I mean all of us today, are toil and are burdened. So toil means we finish something, we accomplish something, but there's a bitterness in it. Our laboring 
should result in a kind of satisfaction and rest. But after our accomplishment, we still have bitterness in us and a burden that's, that shows us our condition. We are, uh, uh, we are carrying something, but the weight that we are carrying is beyond our capacity. So we are burdened. If, if, I, if I am carrying this, uh, this booklet, this, this uh, program, it's a lot of burden. But if I'm carrying a desk, it's a, lo it's a lot of burden. So that shows us our condition. Uh, actually, the Bible can change this word, toil and burden, that all who are sinners, you sinners, come to me. But the Lord didn't say this. He just said, all who toil and burden. It's just a gentle way to remind us that our condition is a sinful condition. We, we are, oh, I, what I mean sinful is we are, in, we are in a condition that we are away from God. And our, our aim, our direction is away from God. So, so our, our position is far away from God. So we don't have the satisfaction. And our aim is, is away from God. That we, our living is not for God. So, so that's, that's why we are toil and burden. And, uh, oh Lord, so, so this, is, uh, this, is really, this is really our condition. Um, I, uh, from my experience, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a very uh, good at uh, school works. I'm, I'm, uh, when, when I graduated from high school, I'm like a top of the half percent of all the, all the ones or the students uh, in, in my province is like, in my state, uh, uh, I'm at the top half percent. Uh, I'm, I'm very confident of my intelligence, but what, what I am capable of doing become a burden because I feel I'm so capable. I, I can achieve this in my, in my college, but uh, I couldn't. So in my college year, in my third year, all my hairs and my eyeballs just fell away. Because what I can do become a burden, and what I'm doing become a toil to us, to, to, uh, to me. Uh, I, I cannot, uh, I'm, uh, like, uh, like Cesar Michel have testimony, some, some clients have so many uh, assets in their account, but that, that asset makes them frustrated, makes them stressful. So a, a lot of times it's not that what we cannot do become the burden. Is, is what we are, what we think we are, what we are confident we can do, become our burden. What, what we feel like, uh, uh, what we can achieve become, what, become the burden that we have. So this is, uh, what, this is, the, the, this is the Lord's uh, light in, uh, in this verse. He, he wants us to come because he wants us to aim to the Lord, to him. He is God's delight. He, he, he is obedient to God unto death. He, he actually, he, he, his action, his only action that he requests from, from us is to come. We only need to come to the Lord and he will take, take care of the rest. Uh, uh, dear brothers, sisters, new ones, friends, I just exhort you to learn to come to the Lord. Like, just like you come to the meeting or let the saints come to your home. To, uh, to, to have more fellowship. This is a way that we come to the Lord. Our living is for God. So, so that's, that's, that's God's promise. His promise is, I will give you rest. This is such a rest. This rest is not, uh, is not, uh, is not just uh, a nap or, 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 or some sleep, that we can, a good sleep that we can have at night. It's a perfect satisfaction. It's a full rest. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful peace with God. That's, a, that's a God's promise. We are, we are delivered from our sinful condition. We are delivered from our, uh, uh, our, our wrongdoing, our, our weakness, our sickness. Like the, like the hymn have, have, we, we, uh, 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 we have seen. Uh, oh, we are coming to this freedom, this gladness and light. And this our our situation. Just come. So, so, uh, so let's uh, read the second verse, Revelation 22, uh, 17. And the spirit and the bride said, 
come, and let him who hears say, come, and let him who is thirsty come, that he will take the water of life freely. So Lord Jesus, our, our Lord Jesus, he come a long way. He have two becomings. The, the, the eternal word of God become the flesh. So our God become flesh. He come, he, he, he was born through spirit in the womb of a woman. And he, and, and, and he, he have a perfect human living for 30 years. And he willingly, he willingly go to the cross and die on the cross. Right. Had, and the, because the last Adam become the life-giving spirit, he, he wants to accomplish God's will. He's now the life-giving spirit. Now we just, he's now the spirit of the, the living water, the water of life. He's, free, he's for us to freely drink of this water. Mm-hmm. So, so when we say come, we just turn to our innermost part. Our innermost part is our, is our, is our spirit. We want to turn this part to our Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus. How about we, how about we all call, call, call on the Lord, the, the, the Jesus name? Oh, Lord Jesus, Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. Hallelujah. So let's uh, all come to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So remember, forget and come to the Amen. Lord Jesus. Right. Amen. 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 That's really, really true that uh, our toil, our, our harness many times is just from ourselves. But Lord already prepared this water of life for us to drink freely. Praise the Lord. How about uh, uh, before the next uh, before the next session, let's sing the first stanza, just the first stanza again. Okay, how about let's stand up? Maybe <laughs> stretch a little bit. Stretch a little bit. Yeah, to sing the first stanza. Amen. Just out of our bondage. Right? Out of a toil. Amen. And come to the Lord to seek the rest. Amen. Amen. Out of my bounded sorrow and night, Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. Into thy freedom, gladness and light. Jesus, I come to thee. Out of my sickness into thy health, out of my wonder into thy wealth, out of my sin into thyself. Jesus, I come to thee. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Amen. So we have two more testimonies from Sister Sophia and Sister Andrew. My name is Sophia. Um, I'm in my second year of college, and uh, I got saved at a sixth grade Bible camp. And um, that night, the youth leader was talking to us about how Jesus loved us and died for our sins. But I had heard that all my life and I never understand why uh, he died for my sins. And I don't understand why that's something uh, lovable. And uh, so my youth leader actually drew us a picture. Um, So here is John and is God. Um, man blasphemes God and man hates God, but God still loves man. And despite our fallen condition and despite the sin that we commit, God still wants to be with us even though sin separates us from God. So what he did was he sent his only begotten son to die for us on the cross so that we can have a way to God once again. So this is how God loves us. And this love is not just um, something on the basis of, oh, I love you emotionally, but it's that God dealt with our very problem that we may feel burdened with every day. So um, I just want to read a verse on the back of this program. 
that's right, it's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that everyone who believes into him would not perish, but would have eternal life. Amen. So the Lord loves you, and I hope that you see that he uh, sent his son to die for you on the cross. Amen. Hi, my name is Angel. Um, I'm from Downey. Uh, I was born into a Catholic family. So from a very young age, I knew about God. And even I was put into a Catholic daycare where they taught us how to pray. And they taught us ABCs and one, two, threes. Um, so I knew about God. I knew how to pray to God. And I knew that God wanted me to be a good person and I should read my Bible. So I grew up this way thinking this, but as I got older, I realized no matter what I tried to do, uh, I wasn't that good of a person. I'd say, okay, I'm not going to fight with my, with my mom this week. And I fought with my mom. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read my Bible. And I would fall asleep um, trying to read it. Um, and so I just got discouraged and I, I just thought, okay, God's up there and I'm down here and I don't feel like I can connect to him. Um, but then hallelujah in college, I met some brothers and sisters who really loved the Lord. And I was encouraged to learn that believing is not being a good person. Believing is not doing the right things, but believing is just simply to open to the Lord. And I was encouraged to pray, to receive the Lord and ask him to come into me, not to do something. And actually, this is very biblical. There's a lot of people in the Bible that didn't, they didn't do very much but believe. The woman grabbed the Lord's garment and she believed and she was healed. Amen. You know, even the thief on the cross, he was a thief. He was there because he had committed a crime, but he looked to the Lord and he said, remember me. Amen. And he was the first person to experience Christ's resurrection because he just believed he couldn't do anything. So I just want to encourage you, if there's any hesitation within, you feel like I, I can't live the Christian life. I can't be the kind of person God needs me to be. Or, you know, there's something in my life that's hard for me to let go of. Or I have this whole past. Just believe, um, even if you feel like you can only give the Lord the 0.1% in your heart, just give it to him. The Lord loves that because God so loved the world. You know, it wasn't just God so loved the good people in the world, but it was God so loved the world. And I'm very grateful for that phrase because that includes me and it includes everyone here too. And it's by God's mercy that we're here to hear this word, to be encouraged to believe. Even if we came to the Lord and we feel like we strayed away, this is our fresh beginning. We can come to him again and believe in what he is. Amen. Well, Angel completely took what I was going to share. So I think we can all just go home. <laughs> well, I'm really glad that that verse says God so loved the world and not just the good people because that would disqualify me. Um, maybe we can, um, in the scripture reading, do you have you see the verses are split into sections. The third section where it says Hebrews 11, 6, maybe we can read that all together. He who comes forward to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So when I was in high school, I played badminton, believe it or not. And um, I, I had a, a number of badminton coaches that I, that I was training with, you know, one after the other. And eventually I, I got to a coach that um, basically was an international player. He represented China to play against other countries um, in, in his prime. And... Um, and of course, I 
I signed on to the coaching because I wanted to get better, right? But in order for me to come to this coach, I need to forget. I, I'm, I come to this training with a lot of concepts, my past experience, um, a lot of bad habits, right? So in order for me to, to come to be coached by this coach, I need to, to let go of a lot of concepts, especially bad habits. I picked up all the nuances of all the coaches before. And so I, I, was, a, I was a mess. Um, I had to forget all that, my past experience, everything I thought I knew, I had to forget. And, and then once I forgot all that, then I could come to this coach to be trained by this coach, right? And so in my coming to this coach, I had to believe, at least as far as badminton is concerned, I had to believe that he is, right? And linked with that, I also had to believe that I was not, right? It's only because I am not, I come to be trained by him so that I could, you know, become better. If I thought that I was, if I thought that I could play, then even if I was trained by him, that would severely restrict how much I could actually learn from him. So I had to believe that he is. I also had to believe that I am not. Right. Um, now this, this, um, this analogy falls very short because my badminton coach, it, it was only as far as badminton was concerned. Right. As far as my homework at school, forget it. He is not, right? Um, anything else, he is not. And that was 20 years ago. Today, he is not. He's like almost 70 now. I think I just gave any of the 12-year-olds 12, you know, 12 year olds, you know, a racket. He probably could beat him now, right? So his, his being, badminton, was very temporary and was very limited. But here, Hebrews 11, 6, it says, he who comes forward to God. Now, God is very different than my badminton coach. Right, God is. It says he must must believe that he is. It doesn't say is what. Right? If this was about my badminton coach, it would say he is badminton. But here is it doesn't say anything. So what does it mean? It just means that God is. Right? We have this this song we just sang, right? And we have I and mean, we're probably touched by something, right? I don't know whether you want freedom, you want gladness, you want light, health, wealth. Um, calm, peace, right? In, in, in his blessed will, we can want so many things. Whatever we need, he is, right? It's not just this or that, he is. If I'm short-tempered, he is. If I'm short of patience, he is, right? Whatever we need, he is. Even if we don't realize we need it, he still is. And this God being you know, God is this, um, is, is in this, is this. Um, it's not limited. Even in just the one thing as peace or patience, he is unlimited. He is infinite. So he is, he is much more than, than all the patience in the world combined, in the universe combined. He is, he is more than that. So on the one hand, we can come to him. But on the other hand, God, these, we need to come to him, right? Because whatever we think we have, actually, we are not. We, it's just a shadow. It is just, um, it is so short. Right? I have some patience, but that patience does not compare to the amount of patience that God is, right? Um, okay, what was my next point? Okay, let's read the, the next verse, Romans 10, 17. So faith comes out of hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Amen. So there's a verse in the Bible that says that God dwells in inapproachable light. Right? Moses in the Old Testament, actually in the Old Testament, if anybody saw God, they perished. But praise the Lord, we're in the New Testament. Right? God came as a man. Even he died on the cross. He was we say process. He became the life-giving spirit. Why did he become the life-giving spirit? So he can get into you. He could get into me, right? Now I can, I can be filled with God. I can contact God and not have to die, right? So here, um, you know this word be believing. This is the third word. We, we often link it with the word faith, right? 
And and um, there's this this common misconception that oh, I just need to have faith. I just need to take a leap of faith. Well, we don't have faith. Where does our faith comes come from? This uh, Romans ten seventeen tells us this faith comes out of hearing. Hearing what? Not TED talks, not philosophy. You don't go on YouTube and search up inspirational videos, and that's where faith comes from. No, it doesn't come from there. Actually, the more you watch those videos, the less faith you have, right? Faith comes from hearing the word of Christ, right? So you are here tonight. The Lord brought you here. I believe the Lord brought you here. You're all here for a reason, right? You are here, what? Not listening to my words. My words don't mean anything. But you are here listening to the word of Christ. The word of Christ being spoken, being heard by you, imparts faith into you. Right through through um, the speaking, actually John one one tells us that the word of Christ actually is Christ Himself, and this Christ is God's embodiment. What I mean by that is all of who God is, all of what God has, everything He has accomplished, all His riches, all His fullness, is in Christ. And when we hear the word of Christ, we get Christ Himself. When we get Christ. We get all the riches of God. So it's not just some badminton coach who lasts, you know, 10 years. But we get all the riches of God, which is infinite, which is eternal. And when we hear this word, then, then this, actually this faith is Christ himself infused into us. And that Christ in us, in you, in me, becomes our believing ability. So we can see we don't have to try to be faithful. Right? We don't do I have more faith now? No. Right? We just need to we need to be under the hearing of the word of Christ. Then faith gets into us. And that faith becomes our believing ability. Now, the last point I would like to make is that this faith, there's a, a sentence that was sent to me that this faith is when we hear the word of Christ. It's the simple faith that causes us to respond to his word, respond to his speaking. So here we see, you know, normally when we have these gospel meetings, we have three words. The first word is usually something negative. I don't know, like from the song, maybe bondage, right? And then, and then the second word is usually something positive, like freedom. And then we have some verb that, that, you know, allows us to. But this time we have three action words. Why? Because we need to take action. So the Lord brought you here tonight to be under the hearing, not just to, okay, I get it, I believe it, and then you go home and that's it. But, okay, let's look at the, the last verse, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that everyone who believes into him would not perish, but would have eternal life. So, so the, you know, this is a very common verse. It's uh, declared in football stadiums. It's printed on cups. Right? We, 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 we see this verse a lot. And we, when we look at this verse, we pay attention. Okay, God so loved the world. And then have eternal life. We, we like to pay attention to these things. But here in the middle of the verse, it says, everyone who believes into him. Into him. Right? A lot of times we think of believe in him. That's not quite enough. Right? Um, you know, it's all, okay, I, I, I believe in Chow, you know. Um, then, then I just kind of, okay, I, I believe that he, you know, is such and such a way, I won't miss it out, you know. But that's, that's not really, okay, I believe in God. I, I believe that God exists. No, so what? Right? But here the verse says very clearly, we need to believe into him. That into um, implies a direction, right? That means, like the, like the song we just sang, coming out of ourselves, out of so many things. We need to get into, actually, it looks like we get into so many things, but actually we get into God himself, right? We get into God, God gets into us. We enter into a union with Christ. It's not just, um, um, you know, using faith as an example. Oh, okay, so, so child's under the, the hearing of the word of Christ. And so oh, God comes, okay, here's faith, here you go. Right? It's not, it's not that. But actually, we get into God and God gets into us. This is what God desires. This is what makes us happy. 
Why are we so unsatisfied? Why are we so struggling and striving with so many things? We're unsatisfied. Why? Because we're not in God and God is not in us. So once we get into God and God gets into us, we become satisfied, utmost satisfaction. And not just we get satisfied, God gets satisfied. So this is, this is a belief. So actually, the Greek word that's translated belief here, it's the same, it can also be translated as receive. So tonight, right, we're, the word of Christ being spoken to you, the goal is not for you to just hear it. We want you to receive it. Receive God himself into you. So, okay, I think it's time for an experiment. So how about we stand up? How do we receive this Christ into us? Actually, we've already done it, but we'll just do it again. Um, very simple way, it's just to call on his name. Okay, so let's, let's do that three times. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. So this calling is not meditation. It's not chanting. It's not a mantra. We're actually calling on a real and living person. Right? Just like I call Chow. I get his attention. Right? I get his person. I get his attention, his person, right? So when we call on the Lord, we get his person, we get his attention, he gets into us, we get into him, right? right? So how about, let's close our eyes from the, from the depth of our being, let's call again two more times. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus, oh, Lord Jesus. Thank you, we can be seated. So I am, my portion is done here, but we are, we are the meeting is not done. Right, I mentioned earlier, we don't want to just believe the word that we hear. We want to receive it, right? We need, to, we need to have a certain action of coming out of ourselves, forgetting everything that's behind, forgetting everything that whatever happened today, you know, maybe on the way here, your shoes got soaked and you're grumbling or whatever, um, right? We need to forget about everything. We need to come to the Lord to receive him. Amen. So I share with you one way that we can receive him and we practiced it. Um, Carl is actually going to share two or three more ways to do so. Amen. Amen. So let's call on the Lord again. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Amen. Uh, let's read uh, Romans 10, 13 in the back together. It says, for whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's right. So when you call on the name of the Lord, not only you receive the Lord himself into you and you're into the Lord, but you are being saved. So, but this is halfway. I mean, you want the full way to come in, into the Lord. I mean, you can't just believe in the Lord. Okay, I'm saved. No, God actually wants more than just believe. And that's when Mark 16, 16 tells, tells us what it is. Can, can we read that? He who believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he who does not believe shall be condemned. Yeah, so this word, baptized. So you need to believe and you need to be baptized. That's the only way that God wants us to be in him and he in us. Baptism is actually, uh, it's like a, a testimony, like you're telling everyone in the world, even Satan, all his fallen angels, and just tell them, I belong to God. I belong to the church. I belong to Christ. I no longer belong to Satan. I no longer belong to the world, but I belong to him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, is anyone here already, they already, you already received the Lord? Already been baptized? Anyone need the Lord? Need to be baptized? Okay, why don't we just stand up and then pray together? Uh, you can just repeat after me. 
Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord, I am a sinner. Oh, but Lord, I, I receive you. Oh, Lord, you, I receive you as my Savior. Lord, you come in into my spirit. Lord, give me uh, your life. Lord, I belong to you. Uh, in your name, Lord Jesus, amen. 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 That's it. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Hmm? Oh, I almost forgot. Who are the new ones? Okay. Who brought you here? And, okay. So, you guys have uh, those who brought you in here, and then I guess the one who brought you in can also bring some brothers and sisters in the church to come visit you in your house to have some uh, lessons, Bible lessons. And then you can also come to our house to have you know, lessons. So we can get to know each other. Uh, let's see the new ones again. Stand up, please. And let, let us know your name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, introduce yourself. That's hurry. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. So. Amen. Okay, you guys can all see it now. So, the training will be in the home. So, the one who brought you in can bring someone else. We will connect after. Yeah, we'll like connect. We have a very good series of, you know, uh, I, will, I don't want to say lessons, but just, you know, simple truths to get into the Word of God and start practicing. Amen. So I guess the meeting is done. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. We have a snack. Huh? We... So when we introduce the lessons, the lessons. Yeah, the brother, yeah, so, yeah, the brother's already mentioned that we, we, we do have a series of uh, we can call it Bible lesson. Um, you know, the Bible is very uh, long and it's not that easy to get into, but these lessons give you a summary of the most important truth that as Christians we should know um, the most important truth. So, yeah, uh, we welcome you to join uh, those who invited you to this meeting to talk to them. So we will probably talk to you also. To sign up. Yeah. And if there's any questions, feel free to ask us. Uh, we will come to you. Yeah, just add one more word. Yeah, um, you know, to live in our Lord is not a work, or it's not a specific opportunity. It really means of living our life. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, material 